Al that's Alpine, Alpine Neb. Alpine Nebby all Holy shit. Um, damn. Yeah, where's that pen? Again? Yeah, legit, yeah. legit. Um, oh no, I actually already started. You've already started. Yeah, I was, like, I don't was in front of yourself. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Alrighty. Another episode of Blind One Tasting. A uh, little heads up, we've actually filmed four of these in a row and it's about 8.30 on a Friday night. So this might be a little bit looser than normal. I guess that's kind of the point of the show. So we're about to taste six wines we have no idea about and identify their quality without any preconceptions, just for you guys. We've actually got these from our good friends of some time. So if you want them, get in quick, which a lot of these are really in small batches. Uh, and if you join our Discord channel, which the link is in below, you'll get 10% off. Like and subscribe! Six more wines this week. Uh, again, joined by a live studio audience. Lyndon, you're here to make sure that I don't mess up any of these wine tasting. Lyndon is a gin maker. Blend etiquette. Some of the finest South Australian gin. Right behind Applewood, obviously, like, let's be realistic. Contractually, I'm obliged to say that Applewood's the best gin in South Australia. But here we are. We'll start out with wine number one. A lovely little red wine. Great little sort of curling off towards the edges and pretty decent clarity. Yeah, it's chocolatey. It's got the vanilla thing. There's a lot of oak in here. That is just so middle of the road red wine. Like there's no two ways about it. Like it's like a light Syrah or a light Shiraz is what that is. It's pretty nice, man. It tastes like a Pinot. Pinot for you? I'm gonna hazard a guess that it's probably Syrah, I think, or a Syrah blend, like a GSM blend from a more classical producer. Good, not great. Uh, interesting, delicious. Yeah, again, nothing that's like pricking my eyebrows up or blowing my hair back in the breeze. Um, but solid, solid wine, there's no doubt about it. Moving on, so we've got the second wine. So nice, golden-hued, I think naturally settled uh, little wine showing a slight haze. Goldilocks. Goldilocks white wine. This is golden as hell. Um, it's something that we talk about all the time on the show. Like the uh, the color of white is so varied and so wonderful. This is definitely one of those ones that kind of looks like piss, but you would not expect it to taste like such. Look, overall, this is actually like a really easy to drink orange wine with a little bit of complexity, but it's not. Yeah, it's not like taking me for a wild ride. It's a, it's a really delicious wine. It's a very well made wine. Varietally, who knows? God. They should get people who are good at wine tasting to come on this show, Lucky. I don't know why they're still sticking around with me. It's bloody ridiculous. This is an aromatic grape variety, probably like a Zabibo, Gewürzy, blendy thing. I'm gonna hazard a guess that it's slight skin contact, not a ton, looking at the color and, you know, giving off the smell. I, I'll grab three bottles of this for 38 bucks, which I think it's it's a nice, delicious little, like, oh, like cannon fodder, cute Brendan style of wine. And it's got a little bit more interest than you'd expect. Um, so yeah, pretty happy, but yeah, not over the moon. All right, uh, third one, we've got a little cheeky red. I think it's been naturally settled. I don't think it's been um, uh, filtered at all. Nice little unfiltered little juice box here. I reckon we've got a, I reckon we've got six bottles in the bag just by smelling it. It's got a like, nice like, fresh plummy cherry smell with that nice kind of like peppery, nutmeggy kind of sweet spices interest. Kind of smells like a chlorinated pool, but like that you're paying someone enough money that the room doesn't smell like chlorine that you're in. To me personally, I think that's a whole bunch of Syrah. Really good, really young, really fresh, and I think it's from Australia. I might have to take that six bottles back and dial it down to a three because the mouse is in the house. Yeah, I drink the hell out of it. It's kind of like um, if you've ever sucked on the stone of a stone fruit, like a plum or something like that, and you get that kind of, like you get the flavor of the plum you've just eaten, but it's also got that weird sort of um, earthy, like, yeah, it, it, you shouldn't be sucking on this sort of flavor to it, um, which is a really fucking wonderful tasting note. 40 bucks for six. I am enjoying Syrahs. I'm enjoying Syrahs that are really hands off. I'm enjoying Syrahs that are, are doing things a little bit differently apart from what you would usually typically expect out of Australia, which is the big, ripe, heavy, you know, expressions that we've seen out of the Barossa. This could well be out of the Barossa. I, I personally think it could be hills. To be honest, it could actually be South Africa. Number four, is it rosé or is it fucking Pinot Gris like last week? Oh yeah, that's rosé. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a controversy a week or two ago when we were doing a tasting and I thought it was gonna be rosé or a skinsy white and it ended up being a Pinot Grigio, but this is rosé all day, every day. Smells like Sanye, it smells like Salasso, so maybe it isn't Provence rosé, maybe it is actually an Australian equivalent. What a Salasso or, or Sanye is a bleed off. 
where they're actually trying to make a red wine. They'll cross the grapes and then they'll actually bleed off some of the juice, take that separately, ferment that, and that's only had a tiny amount of skin contact, rendering it this color. And then they've actually got a concentrated red wine that has the same amount of skins, which is where the color comes from, and less juice. Yeah, this is goddamn rosé. Uh, six bottles, $25. The rosé bracket. If you like rosé, grab this. If you don't like rosé, don't buy rosé. That's fine. What this is, is just like a really sound, really solid rosé. It's probably Australian. I reckon it's about $30 a bottle and I want a dozen of it. This is sick. This is picnic wine. Take it out. Make sure you've got some plastic cups with you. Go down the beach, make sure the esky's cold and have a good time with it. That's my sort of thing. All right, wine number five, we're onto the white numbers now. It wants to be a Chardonnay, it's not a Chardonnay. Um, <laughs> wants to be, it really wants to be. It's begging for me to call it a Chardonnay, but it's not. That smells like Chardonnay. Wow, that's interesting. Like usually we wouldn't see Chardonnay with green highlights like this, unless it was like Chablis or some other area, maybe New Zealand. A lot of that kind of butterscotchy thing. The nose is really quiet. It feels pretty high alcohol as well. That's really cool. The thing for me with white wine is that I'm scared it's gonna hurt me because I've been hurt so many times by white wine. This, gentle touch, loving hand. It's the carrot, not the stick of white wines. 45 bucks, I'm gonna grab 12. Impeccably made. If it is Shannon, impeccably made. Wonderful oak integration. It is ballsy, it is quite present. I'm not necessarily against it. I think it's a really good wine. I think it's a cracking wine. I think it's a, I'm gonna up this. I'm gonna go $65. I do think this is a serious wine. Like that bananary intrigue is actually really cool. It smells like a really, really solidly made new Welsh Chardonnay that I've grabbed. I've grabbed six bottles of this actually. And if it's 40 bucks, I'm a happy man. Because as much as there is a really solid amount of oak to it, behind it, there is a nice level of acidity. There's a nice level of structure. And there's some interest there, but it clearly seems like a really hands-off producer has tried to make the really ideal quality of wine. The last wine. It's one of those things that's like, it's either gonna be Baller Pinot or Baller like Nebbiolo or something like that because what else happens, you could see, like you could see through it, it is completely clear. So it doesn't look like it's been filtered to within an inch of its life, which means that to achieve that, it's aged. We've had some Nebbiolo in the last three weeks, tonight. And I think this might be in that same bracket. My note on the nose is that it smells really good. Oh yeah, cool. Bright fruit, fun notes, but also a little bit of sour and then a little bit of tannin. $70 a bottle, I would grab 12. I think this potentially could be an amazing Australian example. If not, even if it came from Italy, I think it is fantastic. This is a fantastic Nebbiolo uh, done in impeccably well. Impeccably well with a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort, a lot of, I'm gonna say a lot of lost hairs, lost sleepless nights spent to craft this. What an amazing wine. Easily my wine of lineup. N E B oh, fucking hell. N E Neb E Double B I L Nebiol N E Double B I O L O Nebiolo. Alrighty then! What did we think of this lineup at uh, time check? It is uh, quarter past nine on a Friday night. Had a good time. Had a good time. This was a great idea. Quick time. Quick time. This is going exceptionally. Look, uh, we've had some really fun wines tonight. I'd say that these ones. A couple of pearls in here, to be honest with you. Wine number one, which yep. was extremely nondescript, delicious, but nothing crazy. I 100% agree with every single statement he just said. I Old school, GSM. I write Code, uh, I write code to Rain, so basically yeah. the same thing. But lucky. Oh, dude, this could be a little bit sleeper. What do we got? 35. It's not. Not a sleeper. Not a sleeper. <laughs> what do we got? Code to Rain! Where's the bloody thing? Where's the crown? Where's the, crown? Where's the, thing? There's the crown. Well Thank done. God, we've got a it's crown. Done. Oh, yes. Well done. Uh, and i got to say, of all the Cote de Rhone's, I love this label. That's a great label. I would happily have this in my yeah, house. I think this is simple, easy, fun. It looks almost handwritten. And for how much money? Oh, awesome. yeah, take it. Take it. Absolutely. Yep. Good yeah. stuff. If you're it's a wine bar in Metropolitan Australia, that's something that you want to have in your front window. Yes, yeah. true. That's yeah, absolutely yeah. correct. Uh, I think uh, if you are 
uh, interested in trying Cote de Rhone and, you've and when we say the words Cote de Rhone, you're like, oh, I don't know what the fuck that is. That there is like Encyclopedia Britannica. You open it up to Cote de Rhone. That's what you're going to see. And it's it's quite delicious. For, yeah. any, for anyone born after 1991, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica was kind of like the internet before <laughs> the internet existed. Cool. Number very two. Cool. Very cool little wine. Orange wine with Ooh, yeah. not the most amount of character. 40 uh, bucks? <laughs> uh, I said three bottles, 38. 12 and 40. How much? Yeah, in the slot, Mobile. yeah. Yeah, bad. yeah. Italian. Uh, I've I've no I've never seen Ch Chappe Chappe Chappe. Yep. Uh, Again, I've never encountered a Cortese that is as aromatic as this. Wow. And that you know is, what? That's I agree. A Bevo level. I agree. Of... Neither have I. So what's the is the, what's the variety? Is it um, Cortese? The, oh, Cortese. Uh, Cortese. Cortese is the variety. Stupid. I was thinking about the fucking island Cortese and fucking uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm always yeah, thinking stupid. about the island Cortese from the art from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's it's the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing being incepted into your head. That's what's going on. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Uh, cool little wine. Yeah. Uh, I, as, as If you can't get SP68, because it's sold out. Yeah. And it's probably 50 about, bucks. Yeah, it's probably about, this is about 20 bucks to see cheaper then than SP68. I, would ne I, I wouldn't necessarily vote for the label, but it kind of doesn't matter. It's completely up to you guys at home. Or you, but, could, or you could buy Esoterica for 10 bucks more cheaper than that. But this <laughs> is also an incredible, incredible little wine. I'm a big fan, uh, even if you guys aren't. So number three. Welcome I to the world of natural Pinot. Uh, I agree with the natural, I disagree with the Pinot. Well, shit. I 100% disagree with the Pinot, I 100% agree with the natural. Because he, it has, the mouse is in the house. You know what one of those things is? No one watches Stuart Little and it's just like, there's too much mouse in this. This is the right amount of mouse <laughs> to have in a family movie. <laughs> this is the Sh Stuart Little of mouse. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I thought this is a really well-made example of hands-off, like, medium-bodied style. What do we got, Lachlan? Yeah. Ooh, Whoa, well nailed it. Nailed it. I'll grab six. What do we got? What? It's a brutal. So this is just enough. This is our good old mate Bobby Fischel. No shit. Yeah, yeah. This is. He did a brutal. Yeah, he did a brutal. Cool. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you know this, but I'm just going to explain it for the camera. Please do. Uh, brutal is like this, uh, this like really amazing like stamp you can put on a wine. It's actually open for everybody as long as it's no sulfur, 100 percent organic, and you like you back it really, really 100 percent. You can put brutal on the label. This is just enough. Uh, who's a guy called Bobby Fischel, who's actually UK born. He's from England. He's moved to Australia. From Manchester, I believe. Manchester, yeah. and he's like this is his second vintage. He's made a brutal. 100 percent Merlot. Yeah, good call. Uh, number four. Yes. A rose? No, definitely Pinot Gris. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 no, no, no. Let me tell you something Last about one. rose. Let me tell you something. This slaps. Oh my god, this is what I want in a rose wine. Yeah, great. Yeah, like agreed. this is absolutely yeah. Yeah. go down to a park that the government owns with your friends that you own. Drink a shitload of this. Maybe have some cheese. Maybe don't. Who cares? Everyone's having a good time. That is rose, and that's yeah. what I want to drink. Yeah, there you okay. go. Yeah, what cool. have we got? How much have we got? Okay. It's a pretty little bit pricey, pushy, it's a pricey, but it's okay. Yeah. Hey, we'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it. Cinnapis, Tazzy, oh. Rosé, it's probably Pinot, Sanye, you're probably nice. on there. Well done. Nice. Jean Maurice. Jean Maurice. Gamay. Gamay. A state grown close by a hand crushed, 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 crushed press. to press. So it's press, not Sanye. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's been dedicated actual like press for this. No That's added S no added SO2. No added SO2. Is that not? Wait, so no That's sulfur, so that natural no, rosé. Min no, it's minimal SO2 added at bottling. It's just no added at the press. Like honestly, the mental toughness to go, I'm gonna press this gamay and charge a little bit less. If you could sell Tasmanian gamay for 50 bucks a bottle huh, with yeah. no issue. Yeah. So clearly he's just gone, nah, this is a rose wine. I'm gonna do it. And it's delicious. Number five. Yeah, these last two are bangers. Uh, pretty damn good Aussie, Aussie Chardonnay here, I reckon. Five for 12. Oh, 12. I, I was 40 for six. 35 to 12, I was into this Ooh, one. Really look it. at the line of the one of the lineup territory here. Mm -hmm. What it costs. Hey, there he oh, is. It's got to be shardy territory. Shardy territory. Surely. Definitely shardy territory. Naringa Chardonnay. Very good. Yeah, look, well done. I've actually seen that label tattooed on a lot of girls' arms that <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with. Because that is a very alternative girl tattoo right now. <laughs> like, let's be realistic. The, the, the fine uh, line work yeah. is mint. 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, Naringa, they're an incredible family that are running an amazing vineyard in Mount Barker of all places. This is Mount Barker. Yeah. Mount, Mount Barker, Barker. Yeah. and certified biodynamic. They yeah. only got a KFC yeah. four years ago. Good on them for having nice wines as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, these guys were pre KFC, so yeah. whoa, yeah. with the respect to the goddamn name. Um, but honestly, these guys have an Im immaculate vineyard which they grow Chardonnay, Pinot, and Syrah. In my opinion, the best South Syrah in South Australia. Yep. No cap. Uh, and also growing some other stuff like. Uh, Tempranillo, yep. um, some Saint Chibese, some maybe all that kind Hang of thing. Playing around. But also they have a fucking amazing orchard which they supply a whole bunch of South Australian restaurants with some awesome biodynamic greens and vegetables and that kind of thing. And they just so happen to make amazing wine too. Finally, uh, and probably for me, the wine of the lineup. Really? For me, exactly the same. Yeah, this, I think, I think we're finally, finally, please finally, Barolo. 30, 60. I'm jumping up to 130. 130. I might have to go to eight. I'm sticking at 30. How much was it? <laughs> this is stunning. What? Sobolino is high, high altitude Nebbiolo. That's, al that's Alpine Neb. Alpine Nebbiolo. Holy shit. Um, damn. Yeah, where's that pin? Yeah, yeah, legit. Yeah. Legit. Oh no, I actually already started. You've already started. Yeah, I was like, miles I in front of yourself. I don't, I don't care what's going on. Never that, let them know I, your next I, move. Yeah, I definitely need uh, bottles of that. That's actually fucking incredible. $48? That's that is fucked. An unreal value. You can that get. That is fucked. But it's cheaper than the best Australian Nebbiolo. And that's probably not even the Jesus not even close Christ, to the best like um, the Italian Neb. At forty eight dollars, that is insane. If you guys want to understand what this channel believes is really great Nebbiolo, and you don't want to be charged an arm and a leg to find out, that's a really great not way even to, that. Like really me, me and Henry, start. like I'm I'm pretty I'm into Nebbiolo. Henry, you know, I'm relatively you can, anti Nebbiolo. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can take it. You wanted six, but hey, hey, no, that's a really good point because most of the times that we have Nebs on this show, I'm like, eh, I don't know, yeah. it's probably a bit tanniny. Like I don't know yeah. about. Put a pin in that and get some. It's awesome. Yeah. What? This is awesome. Yeah, fun lineup. Goodness me. Uh, uh, that rosé. I oh, give me that rosé. My goodness me. Yeah, we're gonna have to fight. We're, we're gonna fight over that. Literally something for everyone here, no doubt. What a way to what finish a way off to finish a off fucking the week. filming day. Oh, incredible. See you guys. Bye.